Disco Diffusion, much like Stable Diffusion's Deforum, Kyber AI, and Runway, is a generative model that allows you to take an init or your input, which can be either an image or a video, and completely change it or alter it using AI animation. Now all this may look foreign to you, and if you have any interest in Kyber, Runway, or Deforum, I have those tutorials on the channel as well. Disco Diffusion is a bit different from those, however, as unlike Kyber and Runway, you do not need to pay anything to use Disco Diffusion. And unlike Deforum from Stable Diffusion, we don't need to locally install any web UI like Automatic 11.11. In the description of this video, under Link 1, you'll find this GitHub repository. This is Sela's Disco Diffusion Warp, and it can be accessed from this repository. Go ahead and click on link one, and once here you can certainly read about it, but what we really want to do is click on this open in collab. That's going to open this inside of Google Collab, or collab.research.google.com. This allows all the execution of the Python code that we're going to be using without actually having to write any of the Python code or install it locally on our device. Now, this is going to be the screen that you're taken to here, and there's a couple of prerequisites we need to set up before we actually begin. On the top right, you'll notice that this says RAM and disk with a little green check mark. On your end, it's going to say connect. It's going to have you connect this to your Google Drive, as that's where it's going to store all of the files needed, all of the Python files needed, and all of the output images or videos that we generate. That's going to happen on this left side here, and you can access that by clicking the little file icon. Once you're connected to your Google Drive, the only other thing we need to do is actually upload our initial image or video. We can do that with this little up page right here where it says upload to session storage. We're going to go ahead and click on that and you can see that I already have this loaded in. I grabbed this simply from Pexels. Pexels.com is an easy place to grab any royalty-free and copyright-free images or videos. I'm not an affiliate for them, but you can use them to mess around inside of these sort of programs. So we're going to click that and open it, and it will see right here on the bottom left that little loading bar right there. You can also see that we see a warning symbol here. You are connected to a GPU runtime, but not utilizing GPU. You can change this right here. It really just depends. Do you want to use CPU or GPU? Now, I'm not sure why I got that warning message as I am connected to my GPU, as I'll show here in just a second, but we want to get this uploaded here. We can explain a few things while that's uploading. There's a massive wall of text, and if you're not someone that's familiar with Python, you're going to want to skip a lot of these setups here. You're going to want to skip to right about here. Right after 1.6, we get to 2, and we get to custom model settings. You can also see on the left side that our uploaded video is, well, now it's uploaded. So, haha, <laughs> ta-da, there you go. One thing that we want to do is go to settings. Now, we're not going to cover everything in here. They cover all of that at the top of the page. If you want specific definitions for specific things, well, they have that. What I'm going to show you is just the bare essentials that you need while explaining some of these options. Batch name is simply going to be the name of our output file. That's all it's going to be. So whatever you want it to be named, you can name it there. It should be noted that while it's not important, you can also change the name of the main file up here. All right, let's go ahead and go down. Steps, much like the forum, is basically going to be your stylization. How many steps do you want this AI to go through to actually generate your video? Should be noted that the more steps, the longer it's going to take, and even at 30 steps, it will take between 15 and 20 minutes to actually generate your video. At least that's what it does for me on my 3060, uh, my NVIDIA 3060 card, so you can adjust accordingly. Width and height is exactly what it sounds like. That is going to be the width and height of your video. I have this set to a 9 by 16 aspect ratio. 
Clip Guidance Scale is going to be up to Interpretation, as well as TV Scale, Range Scale, and Sat Scale. Again, these you can just leave as default, and as you progress or as you learn more about Disco Diffusion, you can alter these to match whatever you'd like. Again, specific information on what every single one of these is can be found in the file at the top of the page. But for basic settings, we just want to set our batch name and our width and height. That's going to primarily be what we want. Now inside of here, we can have it start from an exact image. If you wanted this to say not start from a video and just give it a base image to kind of have artistic freedom with after it goes past your first frame of your image, you can set it here. For us, however, we are using a video in it or a video as our input. So we're going to scroll down to where it says animation settings. This may be collapsed. It'll say five cells hidden. If so, you can go ahead and click on the arrow and it will open this box. Now in here, there's really only one thing we want to change. We of course want to make sure that animation mode, whoa, animation mode, oh, I don't know why that opens. Um, but that's fine. It, it just popped it to the right side here. <clears throat> Animation mode needs to be set to video input and video init path needs to be set to this file. You can do this by going over to your file, right clicking it and clicking copy path and then just pasting it into the video init path there. And for some reason, double clicking that and highlighting it closed the code window. Not sure why, but hey, there it is. So we just want to make sure that our animation mode is set to a video input, and then we actually want to give it the video input, which is the file we initially updated. Now, a lot of these options are up to you. The one thing that I want to cover is store frames on Google Drive. Much like other video generators or AI animation generators, it's going to be doing frame by frame. That means if we have 130 frame video running at say 12 frames per second, each one of those frames is going to be saved as an image on our Google Drive. It looks something like this. You can see frame 127, frame 130, 129, 131, and at the very top we have the MP4, which is our actual video once it's done. So I just did this. It does take up a lot of space. You do not have to have this. We can click that off. If you notice the video in the intro here or the side by side videos, you'll notice that it was just up front or in front and center of our two people. The camera did not zoom through them, it did not zoom out, over them, under them, anything like that. That is because all of these values are set to zero, and in reality I could simply unclick this right here. But with it on, we can now see that we have the option to move the camera. This section in itself is extremely in depth, and if you want to know about camera rotation, including some example prompts for these rotations and translations, I'll leave a card on top of the video right now. That card will take you to the Deforum tutorial, which has the exact same options for translation and rotation. In that video, we go really in depth and actually show you what we use for our animations and we give you the exact metrics to insert here. So we're not gonna cover that in this video because we've covered it in that one and we're all about saving your time. Doing this will not impact the quality of your video whatsoever. Remember, we just want to get a base animation created, that way you know how to use Disco Diffusion, and you can begin to play with it even further from there. Now we're actually going to skip down to prompting. We're going to go all the way down, leaving everything as default until we hit prompts. You'll notice text prompts here. On your screen, when you first start, you will most likely just have one text prompt with a zero and something generic in this line. Don't worry, it looks like a bunch of code window, but we're just gonna type naturally and normally in here. You'll see that I've changed this to a man and woman running on the moon, futuristic hyperrealism trending on art station. But we have 130 frames in this video. How do we go about making more? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is define the frame. You do that just by typing the numerical value 
and then we're gonna add a bracket not that bracket we're gonna add this bracket and then quotation marks we're gonna start it the same this is if we do not want to alter it you'll see a lot of people will either completely alter their animation into something unrecognizable from the initial video or they want to keep the focus of their main person or object of interest in the video while changing their features mildly this is where you can determine if you want to do that. In my case, I wanted to retain the video of the man and woman running, but change the aesthetics of the man and woman themselves, as well as the backgrounds. I wanted to keep them in focus. So I'm starting each one of these prompts with a man and woman, and then you can type whatever you want. We can then say frame 60, quotation marks, a man and woman uh, running on the moon, etc. And then we can go on, so on and so forth, frame 90, um, and so on. Now, you'll notice that we're actually getting some errors in the code here, and that's because we need to add a comma in each one of these, and that will allow it to go away. This just lets it know that frame zero, we're doing this, and then the comma, you could say after this, we're doing this, after this, we're doing this, so on and so forth. And that's really how you build your prompts inside of Diffusion. For some reason, I got this error. If this ever happens, that's fine. Just click on reconnect, it'll boot you right back in. And when it comes to this, that's all you really need. At the very top, you'll see File, Edit, View, Insert, and Runtime. Go ahead and click on Runtime, and then just click Run All. This is gonna execute the entirety of the code from top down. It's also gonna ask permission to connect to your Google Drive. Once you're connected, this will begin to run from top down. If you get any errors or you cancel it, in this case, I chose to cancel it as I'm already connected to Drive, all of my images are already here and I don't want duplicates, I canceled it. If anything goes wrong, you will see these red uh, marks or the red play buttons with a little red error message letting you know what went wrong. Of course, unless you're downright canceling it, nothing's gonna go wrong because this is all running on Google's uh, collab, on Google Collab Notebook. So that's all you do. You click runtime and at the very bottom, doo -doo -doo, at the very bottom, right under create video, you will actually see your video generation. Now, as long as you are connected to Google Drive, which you need to be in order to use this, you will start to see your drive filling with all of these PNGs. Unless, of course, you clicked off of the save each frame. If you clicked off of the save each frame, you're gonna see a loading bar here, and when the loading bar is done, the MP4 file will be at the top of your recent Google Drive. Very, very easy. Personally, I really enjoy using Deforum by Stable Diffusion more than this, but there was a few people asking me for a Disco Diffusion tutorial, so I figured we would show you how to use it. Now, if there's a specific section you have questions on, leave a comment down below and I will get to you, but remember, everything you need is going to be at the top here. You can see the uh, Variation Disco Diffusion Collab, which has even more information on it, and a bunch of other information, including errors or warning messages and how to get around those. If you have more interest in AI and AI tools, check out one of the videos on your screen now, especially the depth map on your left. That is by far the coolest thing I have ever created with AI.